Well, hello, shiny crafty people. Tim Totten here and welcome back to the channel. Today, I am gonna show you how to make a three minute mask. Looks like a 3D mask, right? Kind of fun, it goes real easy on your face. With uh, something that you might have sitting around the house as a template. So join me down here at the cutting table and I'll show you what you need to get started. So I'm gonna make two different sizes of masks. And for us to do that, we need something to get that round shape. And in fact, as I've already hinted, we're gonna use plates. Now there's a couple different sizes here. This is, um, let's see how big this is. This one is about uh, an eight inch plate here. This one with a, a rooster on it. And we've got um, almost uh, an eight and a half inch plate, eight and three quarters. And the one at the bottom is even bigger, it's a 10 inch plate. So I'm gonna use the 10 inch plate to create a three layered mask for maybe a larger person's face, like for mine or maybe a man with a big beard. And we'll use that and I've got three pieces of fabric. And of course, this is just some Corel that's super old, but it's gonna work great for that purpose. And then I think I'll use the, a little bit larger than the eight inch plate over here on, and this is actually just a real simple, you know, uh, paper plate. We'll use it on this other double fabric. And uh, and then we're gonna need a couple other features, uh, things. We're gonna need some elastics. Now I've cut these at, um, I think these are nine inches long. And I'll, on each of them, I'm gonna add some little toggles and that'll help us to, um, to adjust the size of it. So I've gone a little bigger on the larger one and then I cut some seven inch long strips for the, um, for the smaller of the two. Let's go to the triple one that we're gonna work on first. And I've just ironed these three fabrics together and I'm layering them up on top. Now I just wanna make sure that, that I have two together that I want to be the outside fabric. So in fact, um, I'm gonna make this in orange and purple here as the outside fabrics. So I just layered the lining, the inside fabric here um, down at the bottom or on either the bottom or on the top because that's gonna get flipped inside out. And you put your plate on here. Now you have two options. You could trace this around with a marking pen, but I don't really wanna trace and hit this plate even though it's quite old, I don't wanna put a mark on it. So if this is a nice solid plate. I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter for that. Now, if you're not comfortable, you can go ahead and trace it around uh, and then cut it with a pair of scissors. Not everybody has a rotary cutter or is comfortable cutting with a rotary cutter. But if you are, hey, go for it. It's the nice thing about cutting on a really good, uh, with a good plate is that it'll work. Now you don't want a plate that has a scalloped edge. Obviously you want a plate with a nice circle, you know, with a nice smooth edge so you don't have to worry about that. And then as a, a friend of mine uh, used to say, actually a lady on a funny TV show used to say, Viola, she meant really voila, it is ready to go and there's those three layers. So here's where I'll drop a couple pins in. I wanna use a, a few pins just to hold this together so it doesn't move anywhere. And, uh, you know, I'll just be careful where I put those in. Now you need to also, you're gonna, we're gonna fold this thing in thirds in just a minute, and I'm gonna use my iron for that. Uh, you'll notice I'm not pinning on the outside, so I'm gonna stitch on the outside and rather leave these pins in it. So I'm just gonna sort of quadrant pin it. Okay. So now what I need to do is sort of find where this folds into thirds. So I'm gonna kind of measure it with, um, and actually my pins really helped with that, didn't they? Make sure I get them out of the way. I wanna fold it into thirds. I'm gonna use a line here on my table to do that because I wanna make sure it's even. See, and this isn't quite thirds because we're not far enough over. So if I go to where I put that inside and I can sort of feel in there to see where it is, it's pretty close to thirds. Look at that. Now there's a couple ways to do this, depending upon how comfortable you feel. I'm gonna come along, I need to trim these points here and here. And you can either mark that with your pen, so you know where those points are and then you can cut off, or you can bring your rotary cutter in here. I'm gonna do one of them one way and one the other. I'm gonna bring that line and I'm just marking where those that fold comes and I'm gonna trim that off. See what I did there? And then the other one, I will actually mark it with my pen. Put a little tick mark there and a little tick there. So that when I open it, see we've got a straight edge along this one and I'll get this straight edge along the other side. 
and I'm trimming that off. That's where we're gonna put our elastic and we're also going to um, leave one side open so that we can close it as we go through. Now our next step is to find the two, um, the two sides that we're gonna make the outside, which on this one is gonna be the orange and the purple. And I'm just gonna peel back here and I can just sort of finger press that out of the way. And I'm gonna put my elastic into those corners. See what I'm doing here? Now remember I have two layers under here because I'm making this a three layer mask based upon recommendations from the CDC. And since I can't make, uh, there's really not a way to put a filter into this mask, I find it easier just to um, go ahead and do the three layers this way. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going past where I just chop that off. See what I'm doing there? I'm gonna look in, up in my camera and make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're good. And I'm putting the pins off of this so that I can easily take them out. If I put them on the inside, then I wouldn't be able to remove them. And then I'll just tuck that underneath. Look at that, how good is that? Now on this one, I'm gonna leave a space open for us to sew it back together. So I could take one off, you know, or I could leave the space between the two, um, between the two, um, what's the right word I want to use? Between the edges of the elastic. I think I want to sew the elastic down in here. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to go right to that fold mark and I see where the fold mark is in there. So I'm going to, oh, perfect. Add that in there. And we just know that we need to go past this elastic we're gonna go, we're gonna start stitching just inside the elastic and come back and stop stitching on the, uh, after we've attached that elastic. And I'm pinning through all of the layers. Again, remember I have a, a, a third layer back underneath there. So I tuck that inside. Oh, now we have a full sandwich. And I'm gonna go back over to the sewing machine and in just a second. First though, I wanna, I wanted to go ahead and take those folds that I put in um, that I showed you that I put in and I want to um, really get them in there with some steam because I want to see those a little later, I think. So I'm going to just add a little steam just to, just to really press them in place. So I will do that at the sewing machine real quick. So I'm going to go over to the, to the iron. I keep saying sewing machine, but I mean iron. Just using a liberal amount of steam because I love steam. That just kind of cemented that sort of burrito type shape. So let's go over to the sewing machine now and I can show you what we're gonna do with this. All right, we're down here at the sewing machine and I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna stitch from this piece of elastic all the way around and come back to the other. And I'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance. Pull out my, pull out my, uh, my pins as I go around because I don't wanna stitch through any of them. Now, I'm not as worried about these ones holding it together in the middle because I'm not running over those. Now, on this side, we're just going to sew straight up that thing because we're not worried. We only need one other side to be able to turn it inside out. Again, taking my pins out. Now, I might backstitch a little bit over those pieces of elastic. Just remember as we come to this last piece of elastic here, we need to still leave that space open. So I'm, I'm just gonna cross over the elastic and back stitch to hold it in place. And now we have left this open so I can turn this entire thing inside out. I'm just gonna take the last of these pins out because I don't need them any longer. The, the piece is all held together. And so now I've stitched all the way around and I've got an opening there to turn this inside out. Now, if this were a much small, a much bigger seam allowance, you'd want to really clip all these corners. But the fact is I'm gonna be able to turn this inside out without having too much of a problem with these curves turning. So again, I just want to reach in between the two fabrics that I want to be my outside fabrics. I don't want to, and I want to turn that, that light blue fabric I have here is just a lining for me. So it's just the inside. So I want to make sure that stays inside one. So I'm just gonna turn the whole thing inside out here. And in fact, I can kind of use the elastic to help turn it inside out. 
This is where it'd be helpful to have a chopstick or a pair of a, a knitting needle or something with a very blunt end to be able to reach in, but I'm just gonna use my fingers. I can just keep my fingers in there and push along this edge and flatten it out. Now, one of the things I can feel that you can't is that there's much more bulk on the purple side because remember I have a second layer of fabric in there. So let's go over to the iron. Let's go over to my ironing area and oh, pulling thread along and go ahead and flatten this out with the iron. So here we have our piece that's been pulled together and you'll see that it's starting to turn inside out in a good way. Again, I'll just, I can just roll these fabrics in between my fingers like this, just to get it flattened out if I choose to, right? Now I only want to press the edges. I don't want to take out those folds that I had already created. Remember those folds that were in there? And in fact, I may reinforce them as I'm here. So I'm just doing the edges, again, leaving those other parts where they are and just check and make sure everything's sort of pointed out. All right. Then the last thing we're going to do is just fold these edges in here a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to fold that edge in there. This is the edge. Remember that we turned it inside out. Fold that in. We'll give it a quick, just a, with the point of the, of the iron, we're just going to press it a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and put these folds back in because we're going to use those. Now what this is going to do is this is going to make the purple the outside of, of our mask. If we use it in the traditional 3D mask design, the purple is going to become the outside and the orange will be inside. You could flip it the other direction and do it the other way if you were wanting a the opposite outcome. But because this mask is reversible and can be turned inside out, it really doesn't matter. Now here's a much smaller version I made. See how much smaller this is? This is more like, this is out of a seven inch plate and more for like a child. You see when we open that up, that red fabric is on the inside, but you can also turn this entire mask inside out and wear it this way, which would then make the other fabric go inside. Um, the, the benefit is this kind of mask really stays away from your face. And I'll show you at the end how that works. All right, we're going to go, now that we have done this particular sandwich, right? See that sandwich we've done there? We're going to go back to our sewing machine and see how that goes together. There's really only one bit of stitching left to do, and that is to enclose this space so that we get that 3D opening. And you'll see on the other sample I had made, the little child one, you'll see how that works. It goes... It literally follows that shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with the machine and stitch a quarter of an inch away from this flap here. We'll stop at the bottom here and flip them inside out and then continue down the other side. All right, I always like to start with the one on the left flapped over. And that just makes it easier for me to, um, to put it right in the machine. I'll have to flip or twist it around. So I'm going to put this under the machine. Now you could choose a coordinating th uh, thread. I'm going to use a uh, black thread in this machine because it will uh, really show off for you the difference. But you might want to coordinate. You might want to use a purple so that it coordinates. Oh, I forgot. And I also do need to stitch this side down, this stitch right down this edge. So I'm going to do that first. I'll start here and stitch down the edge. And then I'm going to come and be a quarter of an inch away and just stitch back. Oh, well, I did this a different way. Let me do it this way for this one. So I show you the difference. I'll flip that open. And then we're literally going to follow that quarter of an inch. I'm putting the edge of the presser foot along this. So ignore what I said about putting it on the left. In fact, it'll make more sense to go on the right. And then I literally just put this flap on the edge of the presser foot. Okay, let me get you a little closer so you can see what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna adjust the camera real quick so you can actually really see that a lot better. I think it'll make a lot more sense if you can get up close there and see it. So I'm keeping this flip of fabric to the right side of the presser foot, just to the outside of the presser foot here, not underneath it, because I only wanna stitch down this layer of fabric and the one below. And so I just go slowly. Again, with a, a coordinating fabric, this with our thread, this would look a lot better. 
but I really want you to be able to see it. You can really see that stitch coming. So what we're doing is creating the 3D effect because we are sewing down this flap to the top piece. Now I'm gonna go all the way to the other end where it goes over, over the elastic, turn it, and come back. Down the other edge. Stop where it goes over and come back and create my quarter inch. Now, here's the deal. Before I sew any more, I need to flip these. I need to reverse which one goes where. So I'm gonna tuck that other one back underneath. And now I have my line that I can measure on. Does that look good? And I'm just following it right along. Just keep going along that and it's gonna connect the shape. And I'm gonna sew all the way down until I meet that point where I started. All right, now that we've put this together, we can take a closer look at it. See, what we've put together here is we have, we have now done this stitching all the way around, and it's created the 3D effect of our mask so that it holds, it gives us that shape that's gonna go on your face, right? It's kind of fun. I, I'm really excited by this one because it is so fast once you get pieces cut out. Now let's make, this is for the larger face one. Let's go ahead and make the one for the smaller face. All right, so for this shape, I'm gonna trace with, um, I'm gonna put the lighter color fabric on top. I have the two fabrics layered, and I'm just gonna trace around this um, styrofoam plate, and then I'll cut it out with a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna trace around that shape with my Sharpie. And then take my um, high tech china <laughs> out of the way. And of course they make bigger or smaller paper plates so you really wanna measure. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and put a couple pins in this just so that it doesn't come apart while I'm cutting it. And then actually I'll probably remember like I did in the last one, I'll need to move the pins around. You know, I've enjoyed some of these 3D masks simply because a lot of them are really, you know, fast to make. This is probably the fastest of the 3D masks that I've tried before. And it actually, the nice part is you don't have to, you know, you don't have to send off for a template from my company for this because you just go to your, you just go to your, uh, your hutch or to your, uh, your kitchen cabinets and find yourself a, a nice round plate. And, you know, the good part is, is, you know, you're not married to a specific size because you can buy different ones or you can make a circle of your own size if you choose to. There are several ways to do that. Um, one of them would be to fold uh, this fabric into quarters and then to sort of measure out an, uh, an angle and I'll show you what that would look like in just a second. And then you could just fold it into quarters and then um, do an angled shape. So let me show you, like let's say you decided this eight inch was this, um, oh what, how big is this again? This one's almost nine inches. Right, if you thought nine inches was too big, but then you thought that this eight inches was too small and you wanted somewhere in the middle, you could get a piece of fabric here. I'll show you a quick example. You could take a piece of fabric like this and fold this into quarters. See, I'm gonna do this, fold here, fold into another quarter and you could then come in. Now remember, um, you're just doing, now that we folded it up, we're only looking for a diameter. Uh, sorry, the radius, not the diameter. So the diameter would be across the full width. We want the radius is just from the middle to the edge. So if you wanted an eight and a half uh, shape, you would need four and a quarter. So what I would do is I would come in here and put my mark at four and a quarter. You could use, do this with a any type of a measuring device. So I do it at four and a quarter and put a tick mark and then I would go to, I would just move around four and a quarter. Again, keeping your four and a quarter point there, marking the point as you went along and it would help if you did a lot of these, many more than I'm doing. And you could just sort of radiate around to get your radius. 
So I'm literally putting the four and a quarter point there and putting a, a point at every one of those marks as I just change the, the size of this as I go around. All right, let me put one last one here on the side, four and a quarter. And then you would just match all those up. See how you could do that? So even if you don't have any plates in your house, so when you do this one though, make sure that your folds here line up and then you would just cut that out. And this is the great part about doing that version is that um, you can cut, you don't have to cut around a, a, a huge circle so that when you've got that done and then you open it up, you've now created a circle. So it's a little bit smaller than this nine inch one that I did. Can you see? Because it's only eight and a half. Anyway, I'll lay that aside. So we're gonna do this. Uh, remember, we have to fold into thirds. So I'm gonna do that along a line here. I'm sort of guessing how far a third is, but you can kind of see after a while, your brain starts to see measurements pretty well. So I get pretty good at this. Um, wow, look at that, look how nicely that went together. And you could, of course, wait until you, uh, you could figure out another way to chop the edges off. But I don't know, I like chopping them off this way. Again, like I showed you before, I'm gonna come in and just flatten these edges out. Now you could just do a mark and not even flatten these edges, but I find it's easier to turn them when you've got a nice flat edge cut off there. And again, we're gonna come in, this time I'm not gonna iron it down. I'm gonna put the elastic in and then iron it down, if that makes sense, because I'll know where it is based on the elastic. The elastic will be the part. So now I have my two pieces of elastic like I did before. I might move these pins around a little bit. Again, just to make it easier to open this thing up. And I'm gonna open the side and just where that blunt piece turns, where it turns from a rounded edge to a straight edge is where I'm gonna pin my elastic in. Now on this smaller size, I chose seven inch elastic, but either way, I'm gonna add some little toggles, these toggles onto it. They're gonna mean that it can be adjustable. I kind of anymore don't think you, I don't wanna give anybody a mask that doesn't have a way to adjust it because so many people's faces are different. And I hate to give somebody a mask that's too small for their face. Um, I just don't, first of all, it kind of wastes a mask because what you do after they've tried it on, it doesn't fit. Secondly, I hate the idea of making somebody feel bad. And apparently, you know, especially for women in our country, we tend to sort of make them feel bad if they have a big face, you know? And it's kind of like, well, you, just, you just have a big face, not a big deal. But we tend to do that, you know? So I don't want to make any person feel bad that they're, that I made them a mask that wasn't going to fit their face. So I intentionally leave these long and then um, put the little toggles on it, which are cheap too. I mean, they're really inexpensive. And uh, I do that because then somebody can be like, oh, I have to adjust and make it smaller. Oh, well, good for you. Don't you feel better? All right, so as I said before, I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna start here at this piece of elastic and stitch all the way around and come back to the other piece of elastic. And um, I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna back stitch over each piece of elastic and then stop leaving that space open to turn it inside out. And after I finish that, I'll be right back. I'm, um, I gotta tell you, if you practice a long time, you'll get really good at sewing curves quickly. And a lot of that is about not fighting the fabric. Too many people get to when they're sewing and they want to fight the sewing machine and the fabric. And I have to tell you, you're gonna lose. If you fight too much, you're gonna lose that process. And, uh, and then that kind of is um, mentally just draining to have, to have lost against a sewing machine a project you think should look good. So my suggestion is don't fight your sewing machine, don't fight the fabric. Recognize that it has a way it wants to work together and see if you can coax it, adjust it, make it fit. And it's why sewing around curves actually, once you learn how to guide the fabric to do what to what it naturally wants to do and how to take advantage of that well then you can start letting it go through the machine really fast i was just literally sewing these curves and did that that quickly on the machine and that's because i've been doing this for a long time 
In fact, um, I'm 45 and I learned to sew when I was about 15, so that's 30 years of experience now. And for quite a while I was sewing every single day and that was the main, my main job in my business was being mostly the, almost the complete person in charge of production. In fact, for the first um, six or seven years of my company, it was pretty much me. My dad came along to, to become part of the company and, uh, and we got very lucky. Um, it didn't seem like lucky at the time, but he lost his job working for a municipality in their IT department. And I said, um, well, you've been doing that sort of stuff, but wouldn't it be fun to sew? <laughs> Which is a crazy thing. But luckily my grandmother, who is his, his mother, had taught him to sew when he was younger. And, he, and he'd always seen that as, a, as just an out uh, pouring uh, or an, an out, uh, what's the right word? an extension of all of his other maker skills. My dad's a welder, among other things. And he was like, sure, I'll learn how to sew these funeral products. And it just grew from there. And now dad is a part owner in the company and uh, we've been going for almost 20 years. And he's been working in the company for I think over 10 now. So that's really great. All right, so I've sort of flattened out this piece with my fingers, but I will go over to the iron and just give it a, a quick press and fold this these edges in that are going to be um, stitched in and then we'll go to the sewing machine and finish this one as well. You know, the other thing what I'm going to do while I'm over here is go ahead and fold that edge in, like I said, but then I'll, I'll also put in my thirds, my shape that I need to fold this into thirds so that it can be properly sewn. And I'm just using those pieces of elastic to be my guides because I used them when I was um, over at the, uh, when I was putting them in, that's what I, where I put them, right, those edges. So that's going to be great. All right, that piece is pulled together. Let's go to the machine. As I said before, I'm gonna start along this edge, stitch down, and then turn the corner. So I wanna put this actually, is that how I wanna do it? Yeah, I wanna put that out. I'm gonna go and follow it with a quarter inch away from it to entrap this piece. Then I'll flip them like this and go back up the other side. I like the shape this puts on the actual uh, piece as well. So um, it's kind of fun. Here I'm really just edge stitching because I really don't have a quarter of an inch to go away from it. And then I work into my quarter of an inch there. Now if I was making the much smaller version of this here, you'll notice the one I did of, the, of this one, I, I didn't go a quarter of an inch away because it was so small and I wouldn't have had a quarter of an inch to go off here. But it really is better if you can give it close to a quarter of an inch or maybe an, um, Maybe three sixteenths of an inch, is that the right word? Three eighths, no, three eighths of an inch away. And that would really depend upon what feet you have with your machine. So I'm gonna go back up to that point and then come back down and edge stitch from there. Now this, this flap should not be sewn down at all because we're gonna sew that next, but this flap has now been enclosed, right? So now I edge stitch all the way down the bottom. It just really connects our our elastic in there a little better again. Come off, gets my quarter of an inch. Now this is where I need to flip the two because I need to follow this one. And now we're stitching around and I'm going all the way down to that point where I started. Look at that. Now we've got our 3D shape built into a smaller mask for somebody with a smaller face. So there we go. I've made these two masks to show off. And actually I have the third little one. Um, it's interesting, I wanna show you how this mask fits. Um, so I've sort of opened it up here, this space up here, and I'm gonna put this on my uh, nose and my chin, pull the pieces back there. And it fits very much like the original 3D masks that they were creating. I'm just looking at myself in the image there. And uh, what's fun about this one is that it is reversible. So you can get a slightly different mask if you turn it inside out. Now it's gonna get a different shape. You'll see that all those pieces kind of get shoved up in there. 
It's gonna get this different shape to it. It's gonna lot, look a lot more like a, a, a bird's mouth or a duck face or something on there. Creates some shape, but really depending upon the way your face is done. And it's cool because you get some of the color that goes through. Now I have the three layer mask on right now, so it's a little harder for you to hear me. And it is a little more work for me to breathe in and out, but this is definitely what the CDC is currently recommending for masks. Now you'll see on the smaller one, which is quite a bit smaller than the one I'm wearing, I'm gonna put it on for you just to show you a, a, an idea how much smaller this is. I have a very large face for masks. So in fact, this one fits really well. My mother tried this one on, fit her perfectly. Um, and she's got a smaller face. She normally wears the, the smaller ones we make. You'll see this is more like one of the other traditional 3D masks, and I'm even having trouble getting it on my face. Oh. Now she tried a different one that I had made, um, and I'll wash this one before I give it to anyone else. And then of course, I'm not even gonna try on the small one, because it's so tiny. <laughs> so for this mask, um, in either configuration, I'm gonna tell you it's, um, I'm gonna give it about a six out of 10. It's quite comfortable actually to wear and, and it's really easy to sew, obviously. I don't think it's the perfect mask. And in fact, I don't know that I would wear this as often as I would some of my others. Um, I would, for me, I would need to add a nose wire in, either uh, stick on one of those bendable ones or actually insert the nose wire before I finished sewing it all together. So I'm gonna give this a six out of 10 on my scale of uh, ease, comfort, and, um, and what I feel like is, you know, just uh, the look of it. Still not my favorite mask, but it's so much fun because you can make it out of something uh, you have at home, a paper plate, a regular plate, and size it how you want, and it sews together so quickly. That's been the Circular Mask. Please join me next time on the channel where we follow a another mask idea, and then I share those cool craft ideas with you. Until next time, please like, subscribe, and join here with us. Looking forward to the next one. Stay crafty. Bye for now.